Can you hear me? Hello? Can everybody hear? I don't know who, am I gonna hear them? Hello, can you guys hear? Hey coach, I got you. Sounds good. Okay. Sounds good, okay. coach. Who you got? We'll go Grant Rainey and then Mike Wilson, please. Who's got a question? Start asking. Rick, what, what happened in the final, I guess, 10 minutes of the first half after you guys looked like I had a pretty good start and then Colorado went zone and kind of messed you guys up a little bit? You know, I thought that once we were trying to figure out some substitution patterns, which we knew going into the game tonight. We it was the first time we've had our team on the same bench, and we talked about it long and hard, trying to figure out what would be the best way to do it, to give every guy a chance to play well when he went out there. And we definitely lost some of our rhythm. Uh, we started having some defensive breakdowns uh, where when we were in some switching situations on the other end, then we turned the ball over a little bit, trying to do too much, I thought. They went zone, and I don't think, uh, Tad, that's what he wants to do, but he was going to stay in it until we heard it, and we never really did. And, you know, we wanted to get the ball in the middle of that, what we've always done with it. And uh, I thought once we started missing those shots, we had guys that were really hesitant to shoot the shots that we need to take. And uh, I thought it affected us on the defensive end a little bit too, where we got back on our heels. But, uh, you know, I, you know they're going to make a run. They're, I mean, they're too good a team. And we came out and we got our transition game going. We were running. We were doing a lot of good things. But once we, again, started our uh, substitute pattern that we have not had a one bit of practice doing, uh, I thought that caught up with us. And then uh, to take nothing away from them at all, because I thought it was a really a smart move on him to go zone, because we haven't had enough days uh, since we were – shut down to spend as much time on our zone offense that we had previously uh, before we got shut down ourselves. And uh, we just weren't sharp there, got very hesitant. And uh, that's something I'm not really concerned about. I'm, my biggest concern still would be the fact that we didn't rebound the ball the way we have to, to be the team we want to be. And uh, that's probably the biggest disappointment, just we didn't rebound the ball the way we, we need to. Mike Wilson, then Rob Lewis. Rick, what did you like about what you had defensively tonight? I guess especially it seemed like Jaden and Keon had some some good defensive moments in the second half. Well, Mike, you're right. That, I mean, that's what they do. I mean, you know, I've said to you, <clears throat> they they really are good good at uh, at ball hawking. They 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 will get in there and you know we talk about tackling the ball and getting that guy in your grasp grasp and trying to take the ball away from him. And that, both of those guys have that ability. I thought Jaden was good. I mean, he missed he missed Friday's workout and uh, not feeling well. And uh, then he uh, came back, and I thought he really impacted the game. Uh, both of them made a one big mistake that they've got to get out of when they turned the ball over. They went up to try to get it back and let the ball get behind them. And both times we gave up baskets there. But I thought defensively they 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 can do that, and that's where we think they can help us. But I think between them they had. If I'm not mistaken, let me make sure they had uh, uh, seven turnovers. Seven of the uh, – half of our turnovers, and five of them were Jaden and two of them were – I mean, five of them was Keon, two of them was Jaden. But that's the biggest thing we try to talk to them in practice. I mean, they're both too good of an offensive player to continue to turn the ball over the way they do. And uh, – but uh, defensively – and, again, I thought Jaden was good. Keon had his moments too, but then he had some pretty bad moments uh, where he turned it over, then he panicked and – do it away again, but uh, those guys will be fine because they're, they're competitive and they just need, and I've said it to you guys the other day, those guys have been hurt from the shutdown more than anybody. You know, they were, they were getting in a pretty good groove, then they missed two weeks, and they, they, they were just affected by it probably more than anybody. You still expect, I mean, to have a fluctuating starting lineup potentially? I mean, I know VJ was in there tonight, but I mean, is this a lineup that could, could have a lot of different looks throughout the year? Yeah, you know, Mike, I think we, we're still trying to figure out the best way for our to get a rotation going with our team. That's what we got to figure out. And uh, I was really proud of BJ because he's more – has always been more of an offensive-minded player, you know, offense first. I thought he came out and did a really nice job to start of the game on, on McKinley Wright, who's arguably, the you know, one of the best players in the Pac-12 and one of the best players in the country. 
But I thought BJ set a really good tone for our team and making him work and uh, got it going offensively a little bit. Uh, I look at it, I mean, I, I knew that because of Colorado and the respect we have for him, that we'd have to play some guys some heavy minutes uh, because it's right now what you don't want to do is let those young guys get out there and make so many mistakes that it just lingers in their mind for a long time. And uh, so we're trying to let them stay out as long as we could, but then you start seeing the patterns that develop in practice and you got to get them out. But uh, yeah, I, I could see the lineup staying like this for a while or changing it just, again, we, we've got to figure out our, our, our pattern and we, and we don't have it yet. I can tell you that we don't have it figured out yet. Coach, you're kind of touching on what I want to ask you, but um, you had four guys play 30 minutes, do you, or 30 minutes or more. Do you anticipate that going down with the depth that you have? And as the young kids get more acclimated, Yes, I do. I, 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 there's no doubt I, we expect it to go down. We, we don't want anybody really above 32, but we felt tonight with Colorado, they were going to force us to play guys that experience guys minutes, you know, big minutes, because we felt it was going to be a really close game as it was. And, uh, and we knew even when we jumped up on them early, we knew they would make a run to get back in it. And uh, they did. But then when we uh, – it's not fair to put those young guys out there in some – tight situations early in the year because, like I said, you don't want to lose them. You don't want to lose them with their confidence. And the mistakes they made tonight, I think they can – will be able to look at it and learn from it. But, yeah, we – Rob, we, we need to get those minutes down. Uh, Folky, again, he, he hadn't – he had not practiced since Friday. So I wasn't surprised that he would uh, – what wouldn't be very good. I kept telling the coaches, and they said, well, I hope you're wrong. I do think he responded at the end of the game. He came up with a couple plays. Eve struggled. I, you know, he's, he's a senior. He shouldn't ever be tentative out there shooting the ball, and he was a few times. But rebounding the ball, just great job rebounding the ball. Uh, E.J. Anasicki, I thought, for the first time out, did some really good things. He was shooting the ball in an area that uh, we don't want the elbow jumper. We want to be inside around the SEC, and he just wasn't aware of where he was on the court attacking against the zone. But uh, – yeah, we want to use our depth, and I hope this is a game. Again, it was it was going to be tough, and we knew it, and we felt like uh, we'd love to be able to, you know, play some guys more minutes. And uh, but going forward, we hope to do that. Nicholas Hill, then Wes Rucker. Uh, coach. Uh... You know, tonight, obviously, with this being a season opener for the first time in front of only 3,000 instead of 20,000, just do you think that uh, has affected all, considering that just how different the environment is here at TBA this season? Well, I, I do think it affects the guys that have been here before, understanding what Thompson Bowling Arena is like on a – if you bring a team like Colorado and it would have been a packed house. And uh, But the fact that we've been able to practice down here – a little bit more. We, we've tried to do that because, uh, and I thought they did a nice job with the crowd noise tonight. I didn't think it was overbearing. Uh, I didn't think it was a major, you know, I think it was what it had to be. And I appreciate the fans that were here. And uh, it is what it is right now. And, uh, but I thought our guys, again, they get out there and they start playing. People would probably be surprised that even when the building is sold out and it's crazy in there, what goes on between that line, sometimes we're all oblivious to it until, you know, there's certain times, obviously, you know, you feed off the crowd and you do that, but uh, we'll learn a lot from this. And it was different. It, it's, it's definitely different. I can tell you, it's, it's a much different feeling. I mean, you think about it as December or whatever, and we're just now playing our first game. And I don't think any of us knew exactly what to, uh, what it was going to be like other than We've talked about it. They've seen enough games on TV to see some of it at other places, but it, but it's definitely a different feeling, and uh, that's why I'm just glad that we're going to be able to get some games going, hopefully, from here on out. Rick, Rick, when you, um, I guess, look at Eve Ponds and some of those looks he got tonight, those are looks that a lot of times he, he makes, you know, those kind of pull-ups and – uh, right there around eight, 10 feet. But when it's, when they're not going down like that, how much emphasis could there be for him to just keep going and go to the rim? I'm not sure how many guys could stop him from doing that. Well, you know what, Wes, we talked to him a lot about that. I think that's where he's got to have that feel to know, you know, they were going to 
let us catch it there and shoot it. And, and we, we spent a lot of time in that area. I, I would almost venture to say as much as anybody in the country in those, that eight, 10 foot range area there. And, uh, you know, we tell them, if you go look for trouble, you're gonna find it. And if you're open and we just said, hey, just shoot the ball like, 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 like you mean it. You know, don't, there's no reason to hesitate. We, we needed to get a little more rebounding out of it. Uh, but again, if there, anybody to blame for that is me because, you know, we, we worked on a lot of things. We had two days prep to get ready for these guys. And we, we did hit the zone because we felt like it's something that they could throw at us knowing that, Hey, we, you know, we had to get a lot of things going back to get ready to play. And, and uh, even though I know, we know that Taz not normally a, a zone coach and uh, we, we know what he prides himself in, but uh, we'll be better against it. I, I really think that when we had a couple of good plays, but we, when we got back control of the game it was with our defense and we got out in transition and got more of a, an attack type mentality. And we need to continue that when we get to the benches and guys come in, we, we got to get, some of these guys were tentative, which you would expect, but we got to get through that. Ben McKee and Vince Ferraro. Coach, what did you think of the defensive performance for you guys tonight? And, and how much did Kim English scouting Colorado as a, as a former Colorado assistant help you all tonight? Well, yeah, I mean, whether Kim was there or whatever, I mean, they had us scouted well. They knew what we wanted to do. They, they had us scouted well. Kim knows what they were doing, but he would have been able to do that whether he was with them or not. I mean, I mean, they, like I said, I thought they did a good, nice job scouting us too. And, uh, uh, but Kim was, it, it was, uh, first of all, it was important. I think his relationship really got the game on, to be quite honest with you. You know, we were, uh, I, I can't even begin to tell you what, Mike Schwartz and Reed Sigmund have done to try to get a schedule. I mean, constantly still talking, still trying to find a game that we can fit in at some point in time uh, so we can at least get to 25. And uh, but Kim did, a, he did a nice job. And I've said before, I don't think there's a better coaching staff in the country in terms of game preparation, getting guys understanding what we need to do to win. And uh, he, he knows those guys. He's still very close to that staff. Uh, he's got a great relationship with all of them. And we've, as a, I mean, I've, I respect them as much as anybody because I understand the way – I know how Tad does things, and we need more guys in college basketball with Tad Boyle-type character. Rick, uh, first time with a layout, with the bench the way it was, anything from an administrative standpoint with the, the way the bench was laid out or any observation with your guys and, and how engaged they were as a team, anything from that standpoint on, on your spot? Yeah, we, we, we got on our bench uh, during one of the timeouts because we felt like when they made their run to get back in it, we, we, we were dead as a, as a bench. And, and, it, and it's different, but still, they, can, they, they should be very vocal. They, they've got to be in it doing what they need to do. And, uh, but, again, it's, it's like I said, it's the first time that we've been together on the same bench, benches around the court. I, I mean, it's different. It, it really is because, you know, we're very – we're trying to move people around during timeouts. So – Guys aren't sitting beside each other. Guys, we're, we're conscientious. I'm not, obviously, but people are, you know, they're working it, trying to tell this guy sit here, this guy there. And uh, so it's different. It really is. It's just uh, uh, the timeouts were okay, you know, because that's kind of how we normally would do it. But uh, the bench itself, it, it's just different. And like I said, that's the first time we've done it. We, we, we had scrimmages. But we've had both ends, you know, we worked both ends and separated them. But I mean, to think about it, I'm looking around trying to yell at guys uh, to get in the game. And I look up and Urosh is sitting on the baseline, you know, and I'm like, you better get there and take your, you know, take your sweats off when you get there. Yet Jaden, he was trying to take his sweats off, but he had, he's going to have to run over there. So those are some things we have to talk about. We're going to have to make sure they get to the table first and then worry about, uh, because the building's a little bit different. It's probably not as warm. Uh, doesn't get it like as hot as normally because of more people in there, you know. But the bench is, uh, yeah, I, I'm going to have to get used to that too because I was looking around and trying to see guys and uh, I wasn't sure where they were. Thank you, Coach. All right. That's you, Tom. We're good? We're good. We're going to have VJ Bailey up next. Is that you before you got your beard dyed or is that – Live or is that a picture? I can't right tell. Right after a good dive. Okay. <laughs> 